Hey guys, it's Kat and I have an intro to a video that's designed to show you how you use the uh, Dynamesh Boolean and also these cylinders to create a basic ring in ZBrush. Now what I've done is I've brought in different, different examples for you to take a look at. In the first one, we just have a ring 3D that's an elongated ring. It's been divided so it's a smoother surface and also turned into a Dynamesh. I have beneath that a cylinder 3D just as it's brought in. So I've you know, lined everything up and I'm basically going to subtract that cylinder from it. So if I choose this, it's underneath. I select this one, I'm going to merge down and re-Dynamesh and show you the effect. Merge down, always okay, re-Dynamesh, and here we've created a ring. Now the problem with this one is because I didn't divide and make my cylinder smooth, the inside of my ring is faceted. I could go in and, and fix this and try and you know, smooth that out, but there's an easier way. If I go back over here to this particular example and I have my cylinder, I can divide it, divide, divide. I could go even one more time. And I usually delete the lower levels. So I have that set up on a hotkey. I just press three, the lower levels are deleted and I have a nice smooth cylinder. Let's go subtract that one. So I go up here, choose the ring, merge down, re-Dynamesh, and what you can see here is I have a ring that's very smooth on the inside. The only thing left is to polish this outer edge or cut it off, but you can see the difference between the two rings. The one on the left is faceted, the one on the right is smooth. Now let's talk about bezels because I have a bezel tutorial and we talk about this a bit. If I switch over here to this particular cylinder, this one is brought in just as ZBrush provides it. It's a cylinder 3D, it's not smoothed out. If I turn on the polyframe, you can see that it's, it's in its original form. I have that fixed up here with another ring, just like we did on the regular ring. Let me go up here to the top. I'm gonna choose that particular ring, merge it down, and re-Dynamesh. Now you can see that we have a bezel. However, that bezel has faceting on the inside. So last but not least, let's switch over here to the one that's been divided. If I switch to the cylinder, you can see that I've divided it to make it very smooth, but it gives me a rounded top. I cut off the bottom, so you can see that it's a nice sharp cutter here that's going to give me a nice flat shelf. I bring it down, go back over here to the subtool palette, choose the ring, merge down, re-Dynamesh, and I'm left with a bezel that although it's a little bit um, grainy, I guess, in there, that the resolution actually on the Dynamesh ring could be a little bit smoother, but I could go into the deformation palette and use something like polish. You know, maybe go one or two on this. There we go. And that gives me a nice smooth bezel. So anyway, that is the difference between using the technique to divide your cylinders first um, before subtracting them from something else to get a nice smooth surface. All right, so one other thing that I might mention about this technique and why it's important. You might say, if you are experienced with ZBrush, that this is not how subdivision works. We're just using these primitives to subtract them from other primitives, I guess, to make the shapes that we want. We'll use subdivisions in a completely different way when we start to sculpt, but at this point, we're just trying to get the smoothest objects that we can before we start sculpting. Then we'll be using Dynamesh and also subdivisions to get finer detail. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So first we'll start out with uh, our simple brush over here and I'm looking for the Cylinder 3D. We'll click and drag here on the background and press the T key to make that editable or to get us into an edit mode. Now if we just click on this and start trying to make changes, it won't allow us to. We need to use Polymesh 3D so just click somewhere outside of that and go up to the top right and choose Make Poly Mesh 3D. That now allows us to go in and start making the changes. I'll also switch my material while I'm here over to that MAH Dirty Blue, which is nice. And for a moment, let's just uh, take, a, take a look here at the polyframe. So if we draw the polyframe, we can click that button on. You'll notice that this turns a color and that indicates that it's part of a poly group, but at this point we only have one poly group, so the whole object is the same color. 
You'll also see these lines here. So that shows us the polygons that are underneath and also some of the triangles at the top. So we don't need to, to look at it right now, so we'll turn that back off and start talking about how to divide this. Something to look at, though, here in the beginning is the number of active points on this cylinder. It's 482. Extremely low. But it's a very, very simple geometry here. So we're not doing much. We could even get that down. We could in initialize when we created this cylinder and just remove all of these uh, horizontal lines. But at this point, we'll just leave it. Now to smooth, one of the operations that I use quite a bit when I'm making jewelry, uh, I'll use these cylinders as cutters, and to do that, I need them to be very smooth. Or I might use them to cut out the inside of a ring. So if I can get that nice and smooth, I have very minimal cleanup. So I'll switch over here to the geometry palette and look for the divide button. Now there is a shortcut for divide. In fact, it shows you as you hover, Control D is on a PC, Command D is on a Mac. I'll start out by dividing this a couple times, but at the same time, watch what happens to our active points. Every time that we divide, the active points essentially quadruple. If we were to look at the polyframe underneath, you'll see that every one of the polygons that we had before has now been divided into four additional polygons. If we divide again, you don't necessarily see it. You have to toggle the polyframe on and off. But now I can see that the mesh has subdivided yet again. So each one of the resulting polygons has now been divided into four. Also look at our active points. Our active points have quadrupled again approximately to about 8,000. 8, Another thing to point out here is that I have been performing this operation with the smooth button enabled. Let me divide one more time. And you can see that this is getting smoother each time, but each time I divide, it increases my point count by four. That will make a nice cutter, and I could use that to cut out the inside of a ring, so that's, that's not a bad resolution. Let's take another look, though. It's what's going on without the smooth button. So I'll undo, just going to go back all the way, turn off the smooth button, and let's divide. So I'll divide once, twice, and three times, just like we did before. Nothing happened to my cylinder. If I turn the polyframe on, though, I can see my original polygons were divided into four, into four again, and into four. The point count is exactly the same as it was before, but we don't have the resulting smooth cylinder. So that's kind of the difference between the smooth button enabled and no smooth button enabled. Go back one more time, and I am going to smooth it this time. So smooth, divide three times, one, two, three. Then I need to delete the lower, the lower subdivisions. I can navigate between the top, which is the finest, and then the lowest, which is coarse, even by using these higher resolution and lower resolution buttons at the top. But ZBrush has retained all that information and we will be using that in some different tutorials. But on this one, we're just exploring how does the smooth button work and also how do we set a hotkey. So I have my subdivisions all the way up here uh, to the right. So I'm at the highest, uh, highest, I guess, subdivision. I want to delete lower and get rid of all of those other lower layers because I don't need them. I can click this button or if it's something I do quite a bit, remember I divide, 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 and then delete lower. It would be handy if delete lower was assigned to a hotkey. To do that, on a Mac, you'll hold down Option and Command. On a PC, it's Control and Alt. Hold down those two keys. I'm holding down Command, Option. I'm going to click on the Delete Lower button. At the top, follow the guides. It says press any key combination to assign a custom hotkey. Release the keys, or release your fingers from the keys, and then press something like the number two. Now mine, I've already got two assigned to delete lower. So it says the same hotkey is already assigned. So I'll go ahead and do it one more time. I'm going to assign the number three. Custom hotkey assigned successfully. Now when I'm ready to delete the lower layers, I can just press the number three or two, whichever one you assigned, and take a look over here and delete lower is 
not enabled anymore, so that means that I've deleted successfully those layers. My active points are 31, about 31, 32,000, and I have a nice smooth cylinder. So last but not least, let's take a look at how to save that hotkey. Whenever I quit ZBrush, so I just did a Command Q or however you close it, I'm not saving changes to this, but the next dialog box, save changes to startup hotkeys file before closing, and you can select yes. So next time that you bring up ZBrush, it will have that hotkey combination saved, and you can use it over and over again. With that, I guess uh, that shows you how this smooth function works. It also shows you how divide can result in a nice smooth uh, cutting surface for you and how to assign a custom hotkey. So hopefully this quick tip was useful and subscribe down below and check out my blog for any additional information. Thanks for watching and happy ZBrushing.